So hello folks, how are you? Um, we're going to start on time today because uh, we only have the 20 minutes um, to do this webinar. So welcome to the Muramu PDF Coffee Break webinar. Um, this one is about creating lovely lists. Um, our previous two, one was about rebranding and the other was about tables. So if you want to access those, they're on our YouTube channel. So you're very welcome to check those out too. So um, this will give you a window into how quickly and efficiently Muramo PDF can format your PDFs. And so what is Muramo PDF? Just in case you're not too familiar, it's a PDF formatting tool for the automated publishing of any structured data, but we're going to address data in this one. I'm going to give a quick overview of how it works. Um, many of you will have seen this before, but just in case you haven't, I won't spend too much time. Um, on the right hand side is the XSLFO flow and on the left hand side is the Muramo PDF flow. So the one on the right, um, the XSLFO plugin takes the data, transforms it to XSLFO, which is a mixture of formatting information and content and then the processor renders the PDF. And all the formatting is controlled within the plugin. It's about 250 plus files. And it's either a um, consultant or an in-house developer that controls that formatting. So either way, that's quite an expensive process and also a time consuming process. On the left-hand side is the Muramo flow. Our plugin takes the data, uh, performs a topic merge, then transforms it to our own version of XML, Muramo XML. And this is fully documented and it contains content only with only references to formatting. All the formatting is controlled by our GUI template designer, a template produced by our GUI template designer. And then our composition engine takes the XML, the template and renders the PDF. So that's how it works. So I'm going to show you how to make some lovely lists using Muramo PDF. So to start off with, um, I'm going to show you a development PDF. And this is produced using the default template. And I'll show you why it's called a development PDF. It has these tooltips. And when you roll over the tooltips, it shows you all the formatting information that's contained in the template that produced this PDF. So um, you can see all the formatting information drop down there. Also here and down here on the left, it says section def cover section, page def cover. So this is a cover page and this cover page is in a cover section. The cover page was designed in the GUI template designer and the cover section was specified within the GUI template designer. So just scrolling down through, here is our sample lists. And if you roll over these little tooltips, you'll see that this is an unordered list item. Then this is an unordered list item two nested inside, and then another unordered list item nested inside. So it's roll down through here. All the formatting information is shown. And the purpose of this formatting information is that if you want to make a change to this paragraph, you go to unordered list item one inside in the template in Marama PDF, and you change whatever formatting you want to change. You save the template, you rerun it, and now you've got your change design. So it's quick and easy as that. Down here again is it tells you the information about the section it's in and the page is in. Okay, so this is our starting point. This is straight out of the box from our default template that comes with our plugin. Right, so we have to have a target, um, a target lovely list. And this is our target lovely list. I made it a bit festive. Um, so it's got two uh, images on the cover page, a background image and this beautiful holly. And also that blue is now a lovely festive green or Irish green, whatever you want to look at it. And I'll scroll down and here are our lovely lists. Okay, you may or may not think they're lovely, but um, so what is different here is we've got some circle numbering here. And then we have this uh, paragraph has a frame around it with an SVG background. We have a bullet, a special bullet here in front of this unordered list item. 
And then down here we have some color fill and also a change in the um, Roman numerals there. So this is our target PDF. Okay, so we'll keep these over here on the left as our target and we'll go into Murano PDF and show you how we can move from this top PDF to this bottom one. Okay, so here we have Murano PDF and this is the GUI template designer. On the right hand side here are the list of categories of formatting that can, are controlled within the GUI template designer. There's, you can control the colors, the table of contents, I'm skipping down through it, the fonts, um, the page designs, the paragraphs, the tables, etc. And down here is even more categories that can be controlled, SVGs, MathML, dates, formats, etc. variables. So all this formatting, all these categories um, of formatting can be controlled within the GUI template designer. So if I go into the page def and I click on the cover, we get a representation of the cover here on the left hand side. And as you can see, it matches the PDF, um, the development PDF that is showing here in the top left corner. All the properties are listed in the center of the overall page and the design of the cover page um, can be changed by just clicking and dragging and dropping any of these items. And you can see the properties of the individual um, text frames displayed down here in the center as you click on them. And these properties can be changed or clicked and dragged and dropped like so. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly redesign that cover page because I've done this uh, redesign of a cover page before and perhaps you've already seen it. But I'll just do a quick redesign now. I'm going to import that um, background. So there is that lovely background. It uh, needs a 90 degree um, transformation there. So I'm going to try, I moved it 90 degrees and I'm dragging it into position there. Like any other object on, on the page, I can click and drag and drop. It's not quite the right size. So I'm going to input the right size here. I kept aspect ratio, so it adjusted accordingly. Now I'm going to right click and send that to the back. Okay, so we're getting there. Uh, next, we're going to input the festive holly. There we go. There's a lovely holly. Drag it down here. I want to align it to the footer. So I'm going to click on the footer, press control, click on the image, and then right click. And the footer was the first thing selected, and I want to align it to that. So I aligned first selected and then align right edges. Right, so the final thing here is the line. The line is a blue and I want it to be a green. So it's document color two. You can see the properties listed for the line here in the center. It's document color two. I want to redefine what document color two means. So I'm going to click on this little icon here and it brings up the properties of document color two. So the green I want is, I can just type it in here, 60, 120, and 20. So this is the green that I want. Um, you can paste the hex code in here if you like. And also you can do create new shades and tints relating to that color def if you like, by clicking on show shades and tints there. So I'm going to apply that and close. So any other object or paragraph, et cetera, that was assigned document color two will change to this new shade. And you can see that line was as well. So that's the color page done. Right, so we better get on with the lovely lists. So I'm going to page down to our target lovely lists. And here they are here. Okay, and here in our development PDF, there's our development PDF that will give us all the information we need about where to go to make the changes that we need. So in the categories, the format definition categories here, I'm going to go down to Paradef. This is the paragraph uh, category. And within the paragraph category, there are lists. Okay, so here's all the list formats. Now, all the elements in the ditter are mapped to um, these format definitions, and the mapping is according to the structure of the ditter map. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is uh, assign is to change the numbering from this regular numbering here to the circle numbering. So I'm just going to roll over here 
It's an ordered list item one is what I need to go to within the template. Ordered list item one, double click. Here's a rep representation of what it looks like here. And here's the properties of ordered list item one. So I go down to, here's all the different areas, paragraph font, horizontal alignment, vertical spacing, paragraph placement, and list label and author numbering. So this is where I need to make the changes. So I'm going to click on edit. And up here is the font that is applied to the label, the one. So I'm going to click on this and select the font that will give me the circled numbering. Now I created this uh, font def earlier and here it is called circled numbers. And I'll just go into the icon and show you what it's a uh, font family Fira. And it was already uh, assigned document color one. So now it's, it's already that green. So I did create that font def earlier before I started the webinar. Okay, so I've assigned circled numbers and there you go. You can see it in the left-hand side. We now have circled numbers for our unordered list item one. Right, so that's the first part of the formatting done. The next part we need to do is this section here. We need to put a um, to put some rulings around this paragraph and place an SVG in the background. So the paragraph that we need to the paragraph formatting we need to address is unordered list item two. So I'm going to go down to unordered list item two. Double click. Here's a representation of what it looks like right now. I'm changing the frame, background, fill, and border of unordered list item two. So I click on paraframe here and click on edit. Right, I'll do the background first, fill and margins. I'm doing an SVG fill in the background. So that here on the right is SVG def. I click on this and I'm selecting linear gradient two. I'm just going to show you what linear gradient two looks like. Here it is here. If you wanted to create your own SVG, you just add a new SVG, paste the code for that in here and save and assign that. So I'm going to stick with this one for now. So that's the SVG in the background. And now I need to put the frame around that paragraph. So the ruling I'm going to assign is here are the all possible rulings. I'm going to just go for a thin ruling all the way around the start, the end, the bottom and the top rulings. And I'll just see what is the specification of the thin rulings. It is, it is specified, the color is specified as document color one. That's a bit boring. So I'm going to change that to a different color. And again, I'm going to go festive, so I'm going to go red. So let's see if I can write nine, nine, 19. Nine. Okay. Right. So the rulings are going to be this color red, and it's now document color one. And anything that's already assigned document color one will represent that now. Okay. So now we've got a red line all around the paragraph. We've got an SVG in the background. Now we want a bit of a margin, or it's all going to get very jammed here. So I'll just put a six point margin all the way around the start one, start margin, end margin, top margin, and bottom margin. And let's see, do we want rounded corners? We do select rounded corners and we're going to specify the radius of those corners. I'm going to stick with six. All right, so that is this whole formatting here on the left specified. And I'm going to click OK. Right, the next thing to address are these bullets here, these nice little arrows. So let's see what paragraph needs to be changed to give us those arrows. So unordered list item one. All right, unordered list item one, double click on that. Here we have it represented here on the left. Properties come up in the center. And this time we're going back into the list label again. So we'll click on edit. And again, the font def that um, you can select that arrow from, um, I defined earlier or I added earlier. And it's uh, font awesome. So here's font awesome here. Currently, there is that plain bullet. And I'm going to go into the character map uh, of font awesome. And I should be able to find that arrow here somewhere here on the right. Let's see. Oh, there it is there. Okay, I'll select that and I insert that. And straight away, you can see 
that the arrow is there. So that was pretty easy. And it was already assigned document color one. So there you go, we've got the lovely red there. Right, we're on to the final straight now. Um, here we have a red A, and here it is just in black. So we need to change that. So I'm gonna roll over here, ordered list item two. Click on ordered list item two into the list label again. It's already uppercase alpha, that's fine. I need to change the color and that is document color one. Let's check to make sure. Yeah, document color one, close and save. So that is now A as you can see on the left hand side. That's a red A as you can see on the left hand side. And here we go. The final thing is this green um, Roman numerals and the green fill in the background. So that is, let's see, ordered list item three. Double click on order list item three into the list label. Now the list label lowercase Roman. Now we want to put a bracket outside the lowercase Roman numerals. Okay, and I'm going to put a space in there too so it isn't jammed up beside the text. We'll go into the special typographic spaces, put in an end space. There we go, there's a space. And we wanted it document color two. I signed it there and that's okay. That's looking good there. And now we just need to do the para frame around that paragraph. So go to background, fill and borders, click yes and edit. So the fill color is a tint of that green, which is document color two. And I'm going to do 20% tint. It should be around what's in the target PDF. And there's no rulings around, but we will do margins because it'll be a bit tight without them. So I'm going to just stick with the six point margins all the way around and click OK. So I think that's it. I think we've addressed all the differences between this out of the box PDF um, and this is our target PDF here. So I'm just going to save that. And then I'm going to go into Oxygen. Um, which I'm using to demonstrate that. So here we go, we're in the data map for oxygen. I save that, um, I save that uh, template and now I'm going to run the production transformation produce the final PDF. And fingers crossed, it's going to look just like the target PDF. We can only hope. So what's happening here, if I click on this icon here, um, the topic merge has been performed then the transformation to Morango PD, uh, to Morango XML. And here we have the output. We have the PDF with the nice geometric background and the um, holly. And there is our new transformed lovely list. So that didn't take very long at all. So I'm going to just slip back into the presentation there. And I'm going to just discuss with you why you should choose Moramo PDF um, instead of perhaps other PDF formatting tools. So as you can see, you can use a GUI instead of um, programming. And the training that's required to use Moramo PDF is minimal. Um, it's a very powerful tool. Um, it starts at a desktop and there's a desktop edition. And then there is an enterprise edition that has single channel to multiple channel options. It's highly configurable and uh, there's no limit to the sophistication of documents that you can produce. The development time to create a new design or recreate an existing design that perhaps you have with another PDF formatting uh, formatter is very fast. And the maintenance of designs is even faster. Um, the fact that it's so easy to use means that you can give the control to whatever department it suits um, your process flow. So it gives you control, it gives you speed, and it gives you efficiency. And this all eliminates costs and eliminates delays. It integrates with all editing environments uh, and all CCMSs. And there are, as I said, there's desktop to enterprise licenses and it's available on all the platforms. So if you have any questions at all, please uh, do email us at support at datazone.com and also check out our um, 
our presentations on our YouTube channel. Um, we really appreciate your time. We'll be starting the webinars again in the new year. And I wish you a happy holidays and take care of yourselves. Goodbye.